Good morning, Wadarapa. This is Anna Cardno from Wadarapa DHB with Wrap Around Wadarapa, a show brought to you every Wednesday morning on Arrow FM. Uh, now, this is a show that we bring to you all the different services that are available from um, a health perspective uh, right around Wadarapa Health and Support. And there are a bunch of them out there that many of us don't even know exist, and they do some fabulous work. This morning, I am lucky enough to have in the office with me Vicky Lee, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Yellow Brick Road, New Zealand. Good morning, Vicky. Kia ora koe, Anna. It's lovely to have you with us. And um, now, Yellow Brick Road is a uh, is a business, is an organisation that many people might not yet know about. And that's the exciting thing about today, is uh, bringing you on board to tell us all about that. But before we do a little bit about Vicky... I have a bio here in front of me which is is particularly uh, incredible actually, um, very impressive biography of Vicky. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her before we get started talking about Yellow Brick Road. Vicky Lee is an experienced businesswoman. Over the course of her career she's held CEO positions on both sides of the Tasman and internationally working in health research and communications, advertising, marketing, publishing, not-for-profit, hospitality and tourism sectors. That's a whole bunch of work you've been doing, Vicky. And she's spent many years in advocacy roles, engaging with central and local government. Today, what we're going to be focusing on with Vicky is Yellow Brick Road, uh, which is, for those that don't know, including myself, uh, is formally Supporting Families New Zealand. Now we know that Supporting Families is very active here in the Wadarapa and does a fantastic job. Enough from me right now, we're going to hand over to Vicky and she's going to tell us a little bit about this brilliant organisation that's been going for 40 years here in the Wadarapa. And Vicky, you were just telling me that we're very uh, very lucky here and that at your head office uh, for Yellow Brick Road is based here in Wadarapa. Welcome, tell us about yourself. Thank, thank you, Anna. Well, what's wonderful is to be here in the Wairarapa and uh, supporting the Wairarapa community. Supporting Families Wairarapa has been here, you know, we've been going for over 40 years and uh, just recently we were delighted that they've been ab- we've been able to join forces and, and work together as a national organisation and local organisation. So supporting families and mental illness, as you as you probably know in the Wairarapa, we uh, started as the Schizophrenia Fellowship and then moved through to support more families across a broader section of mental uh, health issues. Uh, na- and uh, nationwide, uh, we've been going for the same time. However, we were one of New Zealand's best-kept secrets, and this, thus November 1 we rebranded to Yellow Brick Road. Yellow Brick Road supporting families towards mental wellbeing. We ensure that those one in five um, people throughout New Zealand that live in mental distress, ha- the families around them that are supporting them, have the tools in their toolbox. And so we felt that rebranding Yellow Brick Road, people will remember our name, because when I came in as the chief executive late last year, um, a lot of people were going, what's that organisation? What, what are you called, Vicky? And uh, we just felt that Yellow Brick Road was very positive. It was about the journey, walking alongside people towards mental um, wellness. So uh, we have been able to get a lot of tools together, rebranded, and Wider Rapper now can benefit from that. Um, I I absolutely love it. I've got to say, I think Yellow Brick Road is brilliant. It's got that that whole sort of skipping down into wellness kind of um, uh, feel to it, hasn't it? It yeah. really conjures up all those lovely positive vibes and that that sort of um, coming into the shining and becoming well. And that's what it is all yeah, about. I it think. is. It's hopeful. It's um, we used to. I think it's gone now, which is great. It seems to be dissolving. But we used to think about mental um, mental health and, and anxiety and depression and all those things. It was always cast as the big black dog with that sort of real negative imagery mm-hmm. and, and blackness. And I think contrasting that with Yellow Brick Road about the you know walking into wellness and walking mm-hmm. into happiness and, and support is a brilliant way mm-hmm. of, of branding yourself. So I love it. Congratulations. Thank you. That's, a, that's a really good move. Thank you. And I think uh, the more that New Zealand 
talks about this, the more that they know we're here. We're here throughout New Zealand. We're here in the Wairarapa to help support you if you have a loved one. It could be somebody in the sports field. It could be somebody in your workplace. It could be somebody in your family. So whānau being, whānau being broader and making sure that we give you the tools to know what to say, what to do. And what's really delightful is during, you know, lockdown was a great thing because we actually, I'm saying that positively, Anna, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people wouldn't oh, say lockdown some, was positive. No, there's some great But we did, we did that word pivot that everybody's talking about and created a whole lot of tools um, that, new, that Wairarapa and New Zealand can now use. So, you know, um, for anybody listening, they can jump on our website. Um, yellowbrickroad.org.nz and uh, there's a bunch of resources so if you you're not alone uh, we know that there's a lot of parents out there with young young people our tamariki our rangatahi programs you can go online and now we've been to develop those resources so Yes, we have a face-to-face service, but one thing during COVID-19, we had to create these online tools, um, and, and they're there. Mm-hmm. They're there for Wairapa to enjoy. And, and you know, online is, um, well, it's the new normal, isn't it? And people do like accessing their care mm. and their support and being able to have everything at their fingertips from their own home. And mm. especially Arangatahi like to be on their phones and they like to get what they need. Mm-hmm. There's also that real sense of privacy Mm. and maintaining your dignity and all of those things that people reaching out for the first time for support Mm. that are really feeling anxious perhaps depressed um you know that they they know that they need some support they don't really know where to go those first forays into getting that support being able to do it yourself online is really quite important and empowering Mm. for people so the fact that that um as you say the positives that have come out of COVID, the fact that lockdown has forced us into a different way of providing support in a way that people want it is really beneficial isn't yeah, it yeah and i think what i mean one thing really is that if they can go on and have a look please reach out please call our services don't feel you need to do this on your own we're there to support you to support your loved one and if you can't do it yourself or you don't feel that you are in the best position at the moment to do so somebody that you trust can do it for you That's as right. you say a yes. parent yep. a friend um, you know family member somebody in the whanau somebody close to you in your sports <coughs> to anybody who's there looking out for you can actually make that phone call um or do that search on you know on your behalf can't they Which that's right now vicky you said a little earlier uh when you were introducing yourself the one in five and um tell us a bit more about that because i know that that's a statistic that we are quite concerned about aren't yes we? so new zealand the statistic still sits at one in five. You know, we have a number of people saying it's actually more than that. Mm. Um, but look, let's sit with one in five. That's far too many. But in fact, that's the reality. So if we think about that and we think about some statistics around young people, it's actually one in four children under the age of 18 were going undiagnosed with some form of mental illness. Now, we need to make sure that we're supporting the family around them to look for the signs to be able to give them the support um, that they need so we can actually um, get in early and and help those young people through this. We also um, know that there are a number of um, our children where parents have um, a mental illness or an addiction and our services provide um, also children's programs where we are able to teach them resilience and coping skills children understanding mental illness Mm -hmm. so when they go home and uh, they can actually understand what's going on with mum and dad so there's a lot of our programs some of them were running in some parts in New Zealand, but not nationwide. And part of coming together was very much that vision of providing a service for all of New Zealand, mm. all of the Wairarapa, um, and that we can benefit from some of the work that's being done around the country and share that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that is a statistic. Um, I'd rather that we knew the statistic and we talked about it, mm. and people felt they could talk about it because that's when we'll get to you know along that journey to wellness. Well, statistics can be quite powerful, both for the people that are providing the service and the funders of these organisations, yeah. uh, as well as for people themselves in terms of um, if I'm struggling with some sort of 
of depression, anxiety, stresses, whatever, mm. uh, whether it's a reaction to the current environment or whether it's something that's ongoing and long term for me, knowing that I'm one of many is a good thing. It makes you feel a lot more normal, doesn't mm. it? Mm. And then statistics for the funders, for the for, for those of us that are out there that are that are constructing services and making sure that we provide for what the communities need, uh, it's really important for that to, to make sure that we can prioritise what is an absolute need. And I know every year we look at suicide figures and that's mm -hmm. a very grim way of, you know, hindsight teaching us. But that certainly does wake people up when we look at where New Zealand sits sort of internationally uh, on, on that scope, mm. we, we react to those statistics. But but what you're doing with your wonderful Yellow Brick Road organisation is making sure that we reduce those statistics mm. and we don't get people who are going, you know, to that extent and we actually can support people at their time of need, which is when they first recognise uh, that they're not as mentally well as they ought to be or could be and you're providing, jumping in and providing that support. Yeah. So I guess the key thing for, for you and for your staff and for your organisation both here locally but also nationally is about making sure that our communities know where you are, how to get hold of you, where to find you and what you can do mm. for them. And, and I will jump back to your suicide and say yes prevention that barrier at the top of the cliff mm -hmm. not the ambulance at the bottom that's what we want to be there for Absolutely. and the prevention part of it we do I mean nationwide we're the largest provider of pre and postvention support services for families and it's mm -hmm. a best kept secret and we we want people to know we're there mm -hmm. and we and and those tools are there We've got the prevention side of things up online now for families who are concerned about a loved one. Obviously, if it's critical, we need you to ring 1737, have a counsellor on the end of the phone. We've got, the, you know, that New Zealand's done a great job of, of letting New Zealand know that. But when you're a family member needing support, Yellow Brick Road is there for you. Mm -hmm. um, we want people to know that. And um, we'd rather that, yes, that ambulance at the top, um, sorry, the barrier at the top, yeah. so that we actually are in that prevention zone and I think um, you know coming into Christmas it's really important that families look after themselves the individuals with loved ones also remember you know that old saying Anna about put the oxygen mask on before helping others that yes, you get on the aeroplane right. Yeah. Now's a really good time. I think we're one month from Christmas today mm -hmm. and making sure that you do put your own oxygen mask on because I know especially females, and I can say that because I am one, you need to make sure of your own self-care before you can help anyone else because if you're not looking after you, you're not going to be any good to the loved one that's, you know, living with their mental distress. So it's, it's I just want to get that right. point through to your listeners yeah. because it is quite important coming into Christmas. We get busy, 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 and we put ourselves last. And actually central to um, self-care is really important. And we've got some really good um, programs on yellowbrickroad.org.nz for people to have a look at that as well that are supporting loved ones. Brilliant. It's actually something that uh, I focused on in our high health highlights. So the Wadarapa DHB takes out a page in the um, Wadarapa Times Age and also in the midweek once a month. And, and this uh, was actually, it will be published in the midweek today and it was in the Times Age yesterday. Some tips around Christmas and the stress that goes with it and how to look after yourself because mm. that is that is a real key for us, mm. I think, in terms of our messaging from from the DHB's perspective. And to, you know, when, when people coming up to Christmas, we tend to put a whole lot of pressure on ourselves don't we mm. and and part of that comes from our children mm. and obviously social media and marketing and all of those dreadful things and consumerism and and you know all of that but it's around managing other people's expectations of you at Christmas, mm. managing children's expectations, making mm. things simple, taking it away from the big dollar spend. Because I think we all know, you know, the, the financial issues and pressures are a large key part of where a lot of mental distress comes from. Yes. And I think there are some really practical ways that we can actually assist people with that kind of budget management. And part of it is just about making expectations more realistic, mm. isn't it? Mm. Instead of these children seeing on television 
and this is I'm digressing but this is a, no, a really favourite topic of mine at this time of year is children look on TV and they see these ads on social media and it's all for you know footwear $500 sneakers and mm. oh, for goodness sake you can go down to number one shoes but can't you whatever it's shoe warehouse or something and, and buy $30 sneakers that do exactly the same job it's mm. about managing mm. those expectations and not putting mm. the pressure on parents mm. and and when it comes to things like the, the seasonal festivities the food you serve the holidays you take the presents you buy just making that sort of far more bring it back and spend time together rather than spend mm. money on people and it's far more meaningful having those memories down the track than, mm. than actually that expensive present that might break in five minutes and mm. I think there is a there's a lot of pressure on people um, just you know right across the board and it doesn't matter who you are, what your job is, how successful you are, what home you live in, the stress that people have is unanimous. It mm. touches everybody. Yeah, doesn't absolutely. It? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 you know, um, I think you're right coming into Christmas. I think one of the things during lockdown we did learn is what, um, how we can get together and bring back some of those old fashioned skills, you know, oh, children creating oh, Christmas cards, yeah, children creating things themselves. Yeah, giving people Christmas cookies. That's right. Yeah. Go, and, go and get a flower out the garden and give it, you know, like some of those small things, you know, those moments that become memories we talk about, don't absolutely. we? Absolutely. And uh, and I think take that into Christmas, um, you know, and I think really just celebrate the fact that we're all together at Christmas. Do you know, that might be, and of course, and sadly, many of us are not going to be, which is the other stress that I'm concerned about this Christmas for people, mm. is those that oh, were yes. hoping that their overseas family were going to join them. Mm. Christmas being the time that families do come together, mm. and I think we will have a lot of lonely folk out there that are missing their very loved family mm. members that are overseas that mm. can't get here because of COVID. I think that is going to be a real problem for people this Christmas. Yes, and I think um, let's let's talk about um, the elderly. Um, you know that 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 even within New Zealand may not want to travel at the moment, mm. understandably. So um, what to say, what to do? Um, we've actually got a um, thriving through later life. A tool on Hold our. Hold it up, Vicky, because um, people watching on Warrapa TV. Is it there? Will, yep, you can. You can see Thriving it. through later life. So if you are supporting a parent who may be in their like I, I can give an example of myself. I have my mother in Auckland, and you know they are on their own up there in their um, retirement living. They call it mm. and. Uh, and what was I to say? What you know, like I'm, I can't be there, or mm. you know, this was during lockdown, but actually it's relevant to the overseas discussion. Mm. What to say? You know, what to do to support them because they are anxious, mm. and this is for you. This is for you that are supporting that person. So all our tools are for you to support your loved one with anxiety, depression, whatever it may be that um, you know, because obviously that mental distress is broad now. Yeah, you know, we and 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 so we want we've got lots of tools in the toolbox. And Vicky, all those tools that you're talking about, I'm just looking now. Yes. Um, for those listening on the radio, you can't see. Um, Vicky has a raft of resources here, all available on Yellow Brick Road, all in beautiful booklet format with a lovely bright yellow front to them. They're all available online as yes, well. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I think that was one of the things um, during lockdown, the Ministry of Health actually helped us to be able to create those tools quickly for everybody. Mm. So we got things up online in a hurry and then we've produced them because a lot of people still like a printed booklet. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, yeah. and also it's great for our support workers to be able to go through that with people. Mm. I'd really love people to, you know, not be alone in this mm. and to know they can reach out and look online, as you said earlier, because some people prefer to do that first. Yeah, they They're all there. Mm. And then if they need to reach out, know that they can. I think that's I think we're becoming far more connected as a society because, mm. uh, you know, another one of the benefits that have come through from COVID, um, from this lockdown business, is that we are becoming more connected. Mm. Um, we used to be concerned about when we're communicating, my role, communications manager, yes. how to communicate to a wider community and make sure that we reach our target audience. Mm. Um we always worry that there might be people that aren't online. Now, mm. I'm sure there are still some out there that aren't connected. I think many of us are. And mm. as a result of COVID and of this staying home and, and, and everything that we've got used to now over the last you know many months, um, there's some huge benefit in that because it has actually empowered people to be able to access what they need. Mm. Mm. I do wonder if... Um, 
digital seniors and, and those sorts of programs, uh, if we beef those up enough to actually um, engage with people and assist them to be able to use the tools that we've got online mm. uh, as well as they could and I think there's probably some huge frustrations out there I think we've all been in zoom meetings that haven't worked and whatnot but on the whole, on the whole. having that access mm. um, to online service has been has been really good for people knowing that all of this is there for people yeah. online is is really valuable yeah I mean I think there are one of the things that we did learn about turning things into sort of digital telephone zoom yes is that there are a l number of New Zealanders in remote areas and you know think even the Wairarapa you know they just can't come into Queen Street um, so to be able to do that phone call uh, quick support online uh, whether it could be a zoom call if you can't come in at least we're there for everybody and, and we have had to change how we our service is delivered and and if that means more New Zealanders get support then that's a great thing I mean that's just fantastic um, you know, I still am a great believer that our service, wherever possible, should be face-to-face. -face. I think it's much better face-to-face, -face, but any support is better than no support. Yes, I agree, um, and face-to-face -face is brilliant. However, there are still a lot of people out there, I think, that prefer that privacy mm. of being in their own home and not having that um, intrusion of someone else in their space. So for yep. a lot of people, that yep. the sort of the cover of the phone and being over the phone, mm. being at home, is, is quite important yep. to them. So I think, I think the service that you provide is fantastic because you offer all of those options mm. for people. So you cover the ones that need that real um, sort of one-to-one, -one, face to face, yes. that immediate support of having that person in front of you that you can you can do your offloading and you can have that really active support. But for those that are perhaps a little bit more private, mm. a little bit more unsure, or perhaps they don't feel that they are in need of that um, that immediate uh, that sort of um, focused support, but mm. they just want to touch someone, knowing that someone can be there to provide them a bit of advice mm. over the phone. Yeah, um, that's really really of benefit. I think we're it's hugely beneficial and uh, to be brutally honest we've seen the growth in males yeah okay so you think about you know yeah. the men listening yeah. you know ha when was the last time you went to your doctor yeah. you know you thought oh, I'll be all right well actually it's okay to c pick up the phone so we're finding that a lot of um, more men are actually uh, calling in for the service, calling in via, you know, using technology or via the phone, and that's okay too. I'd it's, rather that yeah, they did. Absolutely. Um, and you know, so it's not for everybody. Our support groups, you know, are groups, and a lot of people benefit hugely from them. There are others that don't. That's not the way that they want support. So we try and make sure we're catering for all of Wairarapa in that, and all of New Zealand in that. Well, I certainly think that you do that well. I think I think you mentioned earlier also 1737, which mm -hmm. again is another national support service that's available, that yep. text or phone 1737. Yep. And of course, we've heard a lot about that over the COVID mm. campaign and, yep. and, and uh, looking after the um, national wellbeing. And yep. I think that is, a, that is a great service that yep. also is available for people um, that does touch people and it is accessible. And mm. uh, and I think that, that that is great. We, uh, you know, some of the other services that we have here in Wairarapa also um, is our wonderful rural support that's provided yes. by the East Coast Rural Support Trust. Now you must work quite closely, mm. I think, with uh, mm. Sarah Donaldson and, mm. and, and John and those uh, that team because they do. You, you talked before about Wairarapa having some isolated spots. Well, yes. I used to live at Otaheim in the middle of uh, absolutely nowhere, beautiful between though. Castle Point and, and and Riversdale, right on the coast, up a goat track, an yep. hour from Masterton. Connectivity is not great. Uh, but, you know, th those being able to, and you don't come into town a lot, you know, no. once a week, once a fortnight, you've got a lot on your plate, big long lists. Um, being able to connect like that uh, with the East Coast Rural Support Trust, um, having 1737, having your resources yep. online and yep. being able to come in, there actually is a lot out there, isn't there, to yep. support our Wadarapa community. Absolutely. Really Absolutely. you do all, we, I, know, I know you do. Work collaboratively. Our, yeah. So, yep. um, and I think Wadarapa is very good at that. So yep. um, in, the, in the work that I've done over over the last sort of four or five years around suicide prevention, I've, I've sort of had uh, quite a key focus in that area, and I know that the um, 
the intentions of everybody to collaborate and to provide a unified service and that whole any door's the right door and you know, knock on any door and we yeah. will look after you yeah. and get you where you need to be uh, to provide support service that suits you and and there is something out there that suits everybody that's we right do all work together um, and and yeah changing the name I think and it will you know rebranding is as, as yeah. yellow brick road and yeah. launching yellow brick road that's certainly something that people are not going to forget it's <laughs> a it's far more catchy and, and yeah. memorable I think yeah. isn't it? We want people to remember and know we're here for them. Mm. And that is that very much, you're right, that support group around people. Yeah. How are we going for time? Oh, brilliant. Another oh, five good. minutes. Oh, we good, good, good. Forever. Yeah, so so knowing that we're the supporting the whanau, the family around the individual with the loved one, then there are lots of supports for, you know, like 1737, if you yourself need mm. some, you know, the help. Um, but your any door is the right door is correct. And, you know, there are a lot of not, for profits out there that actually are there to support you. We don't all do the same thing because that would be silly. So collaborative uh, approach is really, really important. So yes, the wire wrapper, you know, if you ring us and it's and it isn't something we do, we absolutely know where to steer you. Yeah. And yeah, that's and yeah. and and similarly, you say um, rural support. You know, wherever it may be, the, mm. once again, we will collaborate and work together. That's the best way to get the support for the community mm. yeah mm. Mm. absolutely and I think when it comes to the different services that we that we have here in the Wadarapa mm -hmm. I think we're becoming better at not duplicating a service uh, yes. yes so I think I think something that New Zealand I don't know if it's particular to New Zealand I don't know if it's if it's just here but I think something New Zealanders do a lot of is we have an enormous amount of goodwill and we have a whole bunch of people and services that all want to provide wonderful things for people. So we tend to have these charities that sort of pop up, um, often out of, you know, I'm thinking maybe cancer services, you know, a person gets cancer and, and suddenly there'll be a whole raft of people that will be supporting them and there'll be a charity that pops up and there'll be fundraising that goes on and there'll be a little bit, you know, so we have all these sort of ad hoc things that sort of, that, that support people around the place. I think we're becoming a lot better now at saying, actually, let's streamline things yeah. let's not duplicate what we provide mm. let's do this in a really organized fashion so that we can provide the support that everybody needs i think we're a lot better at assessing the different ways in which people require support and the different needs that people have because when it comes to uh mental distress um you know there is still some stigma around mental distress and mm -hmm. we know that and yep. people people were very quick to say I am not mentally ill I do mm. not have a mental illness what we do is provide support across the board for people that are right from low level stress and anxiety yes. all the way through to the schizophrenia high and, complex, and the yes. high needs yep. and um so I think it's about taking away that stigma. Mm. It's about making sure that people recognise that any amount of stress and anxiety and depression can be addressed mm -hmm. and there are supports out there yep. in different ways. Yep. Uh, and anybody that you reach out to is going to put you in touch with yep. what is available. And you hit the nail on the head. You know, one of the reasons I took up this role was it was a vision that we there was lots of small charities. There's 27,000 charities in New Zealand. Know, and I've often been quoted in the media around that's too many and, and wouldn't we be better to work together? Wouldn't we be better to have one CEO? Um, and wouldn't we be better to, to share back-end services, etc.? Well, we're doing that out of the wire wrapper right now. Mm. We've brought a whole lot of small branches around New Zealand together for the greater good of New Zealand in terms of supporting families towards mental well-being. So I completely get what you're saying, and I think we're very clear on our, you know, what we do, and that is, you know, Yellow Brick Road supporting families towards mental well-being. We're the wrap around to help the family, tools in the toolbox, and then share where else you go if you need other supports and you know we are too small a country to you know we need to be clear about what different charities are there to do and not have double up mm. um, and that way New Zealand will be supported really well mm, absolutely um, yeah yeah so absolutely. I agree with you completely yeah, <laughs> pairing it down yes. and providing a more effective service in a way that yep. can reach more people that's it 
in a more targeted fashion. And yep. I, I think we're getting better at that. Way better. I think um, part of what's um, sparked that enormous growth, and as you say, 27,000 far too many, but uh, part of what's sparked that, I think, is the give a little pages and things yes. like that on social media. Yep. So social media is brilliant when used properly, but we all know the dangers that abound with yes. that platform. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Give a little pages again, brilliant, wonderful, wonderful um, initiative. However, it does come with its own package of problems. Mm. Part of that is that you have people that are, you know, suddenly there's a whole lot of funding, you know, community crowdfunding going on for particular people or particular circumstances, mm. and then there's a lot of money left over, and then a charity booms and starts and flourishes with very little checks and balances on that mm. or sort of governance around it. So I think what you're doing in terms of that collaborating, getting people together and, and sort of having a far broader sense of, of um, governance over over the supports that are offered mm. and how that's managed mm. I think is brilliant yeah and we so we're about to finish for Whoa, now, where did that go I know, we're, now, <laughs> we're now cribbing time but last couple of seconds on yellow brick road what do you need people to know they need to know, Wairarapa, please go online to our yellowbrickroad.org.nz. Don't feel that you have to uh, do this on your own, uh, supporting a loved one, um, and have a look at those tools. And if you really need support, please make sure that you uh, contact the Queen Street office. Um, and Queen Street Masterton. Queen Street yeah. Masterton, yep. sorry. Absolutely. Um, and uh, and, and uh, the team there will be there to support you. Thank you, Vicky. Vicky Lee, CEO of Yellow Brick Road New Zealand, based right here in Masterton for Wadarapa. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Love what you're doing. Love the new branding. Thank you. I don't think anyone will forget Yellow Brick Road. Oh, Very we nice hope to not. have you with us this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Anna.